you. On the 4th of June, 1964, my parents came to this country. I'm proud to say that they were immigrants. They had almost no money, but they longed for a better life for me and my brothers. They had a fierce work ethic and a burning determination to make their dreams happen. They taught me to work hard, to take responsibility for myself and my actions, to appreciate the importance of family, and to love my country, our country, this United Kingdom. Now, I did not know it at the time, but now I realize that what they were teaching me were a set of unshakable values, unshakable conservative values. These were the values that my parents believed in when they first arrived on these shores. And these are the values that I live by. And these are the values that must underpin a conservative government in 21st century Britain. A Britain where everyone can reach their true potential. It's only in the Conservative Party, after all, that a Rochdale-born son of an immigrant bus driver can become Secretary of State. for culture. <laughs> now, now, some people in Labour seem to resent where I've ended up. On my appointment, that great sage, Ken Livingstone, said that when he saw me, he did not see, a, uh, he did not see someone that's British, but he saw a Pakistani. And he also said, instead, he saw a banker. Well, Ken, I'm actually British. But yes, my heritage is Pakistani. And yes, I was a banker. But I'm not ashamed of those facts. I'm proud of them. <laughs> Ken's crass comment shows Labour's confusion about why I am a conservative, about why anyone from an ethnic minority or from a working class background does not automatically vote Labour. Well, let me explain. I believe in opportunity. I believe that I, and not the state, should decide the course of my life. And I believe that if you work hard, you should be rewarded. No wonder it confuses the Labour Party. They would, have, they would prefer us not to have any aspirations. They would prefer to tell us what to do. They would prefer us to know our place. But unlike Labour, I don't believe in wasting other people's money. I don't believe that you could continue living beyond your means. And I don't believe that Labour have learnt their lesson. Now, if you look at Ed Miliband's shadow cabinet, you will see that it's the same old Labour. The same old Labour that gave us the deepest recession in almost 100 years. It's the same old Labour that gave us the biggest budget deficit since the Second World War. And it's also the same old Labour that gave us the world's largest banking bailout, one bank, 50 billion pounds. And when they left office, they even left a note. I happen to have a copy with me here. <laughs> Sorry, I don't always carry it with me. <laughs> and it says, I'm afraid there is no money. Kind regards and good luck. 
Good luck. Conference, that is why we must never let them near the British economy again. Now, it's very easy to contrast Labour's toxic legacy with what this government has achieved. Record inward investment, higher export, lower taxes, manufacturing thriving, jobs being created, and a return to economic growth. The Conservatives getting Britain back on track. Now, take my own department. Our ambitious broadband program is reaching every corner of the country. We know that the internet superhighway is as important as our railways and our motorways. So we're investing almost one billion pounds of government money to take superfast broadband to 95% of the country by 2017. Since 2010, access to superfast broadband has more than doubled. And we already have the best broadband coverage of any large European nation. But my officials love telling me that we're beating France and Germany. But beating them, for me, is never enough. We need to compete with the likes of Japan and South Korea. So yes, we're making progress, but there is still much more to do. We need to work harder in improving mobile phone coverage, especially in rural areas. There are vast swathes of our countryside where you still cannot get a decent mobile signal. And that is just not good enough. Our mobile companies must do more, and I will make sure that they do. Whether it's our fashion, our film, our TV, our design, our video games, Britain is a leader in the creative industries. Now it's true of our music too. One in eight albums sold worldwide is by a British act. Now, some of you might recall that a couple of years ago, a Russian official tried to write off the UK. He said that we are a small island that no one listens to. Well, he was half right. We are a small island, but the whole world is listening to us. And they're watching us too. The last series of 24 was not in New York, it was set in London. Game of Thrones is not made in America, it's made in Northern Ireland. And when the star seventh Star Wars film is being filmed, it's not being filmed in Hollywood, but at Pinewood Studios in Buckinghamshire. Our creative, <laughs> our creative industries are worth more than 70 billion pounds a year to the economy and they're playing a huge role in our economic recovery. Uh, tourism is also a central part of our long-term economic plan. Last year saw 33 million visitors, that's a record, coming to the UK. And they spent more money than ever before. Now, they're certainly not coming here for the weather. They're coming because we have the best heritage, sports, arts, and culture in the world. That's why they came here this year for the Commonwealth Games and even the Tour de France, and why they'll come next year for the Rugby World Cup, and why they keep coming every year to visit our theatres, our ancient monuments, our museums, and our galleries. But these things are not just tourist attractions. They are absolutely central to who we are as a nation. It is our culture, our heritage, our traditions, our sheer creativity that make Britain great. <laughs> and it is true that we've had to take some difficult decisions and cut taxpayer funding. But because of our national lottery reforms, we've been able to protect most budgets so don't let anyone tell you that conservatives don't care about culture. We do, 
but we just want to make sure that your money is spent carefully. It's the same with the BBC. We froze the license fee back in 2010, and I, challenge, I continue to challenge them to do more with less, because spending public money is a privilege, not a right. I ask myself also, can it be right that someone goes to prison for not paying their license fee? That is why I am reviewing this whole issue. Now, in all of these areas, in all of these areas, there is more to do. But to do it, we need to get re-elected. In seven months' time, our country faces a choice. A choice between economic security with the Conservatives or a return to higher spending and higher taxes with Labour. A choice between a Conservative Party that respects and rewards hard work or a Labour Party that encourages a culture of dependency. A choice between a Prime Minister and a Chancellor who have repaired the economy and driven it into the fast lane or handing back the keys to the team that crashed the car. We need the country to make the right choice, to choose jobs, to choose growth, to choose ambition, to choose opportunity, and to choose David Cameron as Prime Minister of a majority Conservative government.